I mean, I think, you know, we have certain pillars and certain things that we stand for on the defense, and obviously one of those is not giving up big plays. Um, so obviously we show those type of plays in, in, you know, during the meetings or whatever it may be. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's not something that we're just looking at a bunch of – well, I know for a fact, me personally, and I know sometimes they don't really bring it up that much, but as far as like – you know, you gave up 10% of your passes. That was, you know, like, we don't talk about that. We talk about the main things that we, that we believe in as a team so we can be preached over to the entire group. It's not just one player, hey, you did this. So, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, uh, we're just trying to work on everything. Right? It's giving up big plays, forcing more turnovers. You know, one thing we did talk about is, you know, having a lot of sacks last year, but not a lot of strip fumbles and things like that. So we've been working on things like that. So, like I said, as a total, as a defense, we have plenty of things we have to work on. We're not just leaning on the stats that we had last year because at the end of the day, that was last year, and this is this is this year. In a preparation week, when you're going against an opponent you went against last year, will you see some of that? Is there some recall to, to that? Yeah, sure. I mean, especially, I mean, a lot of it has to do with, you know, who is the offensive coordinator or something like that. So if they had the same offensive coordinator, we'll definitely look at the plays from that year and maybe, you know, our defensive coordinator will try to run some stuff like that. But everything is new. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we're not going to expect this, that team to run the same stuff against us, especially if we had success. So at the end of the day, you can look at some of that stuff, but we're not depending on it or depending on, hey, they ran this play last year, this same play is going to come up. So, uh, like I said, the schemes and everything is always going to be different. We're always trying to reinvent, not necessarily reinvent the wheel, but we're always trying to add on to some stuff that we did last year. So it's all about trying to have more success than we had last year. You get a sense of Demarcus Walker at all from where you are? I see that he's playing with great effort. You know, it's not perfect. We're still early in training camp. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I don't have perfect plays out there. But I try to preach to the guys that, hey, the effort has to be on point every single time because when a guy does make a mistake, when a guy does miss a tackle, we have another guy running there, may punch the ball out and get a turnover. So a negative could turn to a positive he's with great effort. With yeah, no, absolutely. I think he's fit really well in with us, uh, a lot of guys out there. But definitely he, he showed up with his effort. Kevin, so you were pretty about. animated with Caleb after the long pass to Racy. What were you right. saying? I mean, we just can't give a big plays. I mean, uh, it wasn't just him. You know, we all gave, uh, gave us some plays. But, uh, you know, I've kind of – I spoke highly of him, you know, uh, on a podium. But it's one thing I'm always going to stay on him because he has a great talent. Uh, kind of like he got a little gassed out there. But at the end of the day, that's how it is. You know, in practice, you know, you're kind of four plays and the two has come out there. In the game, you may be out there for eight-plus plays. And that may be the time where they're on the 30-yard line. They're in that fringe area and they're taking a shot. You know, so I'm trying to, you know, make everything look like a game situation. So just talking to him about that, that, hey, we can't give a big plays, and it's not always going to be four and done. We could be out there for 10 plays. We could be out there for 12, 15 plays, depending on how the offense is playing. So we have to make sure we're just fighting through the adversity. Is that specifically maybe conditioning or something with him right now? Because it seemed like he was a step unsure, a step slow on several balls today. And, I mean, obviously he hasn't played a lot of football in the last couple of years. How do you work him through that? No, I mean, it's possible. Obviously he has to speak for that. I can't necessarily say that he was tired or not. But when I turned around, the ball's getting thrown over the top of our head. That's something I have to address. Um, but like I said, it could have been some indecision. It could have been conditioning. It could be whatever it may be. You can ask him, he'll probably tell you, and he'll probably be real with you. But I just feel like at the end of the day, you know, with him being a guy that we're going to have to depend on a lot this year, uh, I just got to keep holding him to that standard. And obviously, still early in training camp. You know, it's just one of those things where it's, everything is a learning experience. I mean, for real, for real, he's still a rookie uh, as far as the amount of reps that he's been able to have. So everything is going to be a teaching moment, for, in, in my opinion, when it comes to him. Coach Yannick said he wanted you to match your footwork to your processing. What does that mean to you? Can you explain that? That means I'm processing faster than what I'm used to going within my footwork process. Like I'm processing the information and knowing what I need to do, but in order to be on time and be able to throw anticipation, I need to help my feet get up to with my processing ability. So it's like knowing what to do, but just getting the reps where you're able to do it without thinking, you know? How do you accomplish that? Reps. Just reps, period. It looked, yeah. like, it looked like you were much more decisive in that long team period there, letting the ball go quickly and you know, letting the receiver come out of his break and all. You're starting to feel a lot more comfortable in, in terms of that every day? I mean, that's just kudos to my teammates and going and getting open uh, and having time too. So uh, I just appreciate the O-line, appreciate my receivers from getting open. And these are plays that we've been repping, so I feel like I should start to you know pick it up by now. Are these the kind of steps that, that you expected uh, Malik coming in here, especially maybe coming from you know, from a smaller school as well? I don't think that matters. Right. <laughs> yeah, but uh, nah, yeah. I mean, it's football, bro. At the end of the day, it's just how willing are you to work at it and understand new terminology and uh, new concepts and just going against 
the best players in the world. With limited reps in practice, what are some things you're doing outside or after the practice hours to get that football process to speed up too? This camp, brother, we're doing a lot. <laughs> doing a lot. We got a lot of time during the day in this building after y'all leave. So we've just been working on it a lot. Hey, Malik, obviously in college you're getting all the reps. Here, maybe reps are, are more spread out. How do you take advantage of those? And what's kind of your mindset when you, when you get one? I mean, you just try to be thankful for our opportunity, uh, and whenever you get it, you take advantage of it and be back there taking mental reps on all the plays, and that's what Coach Rave has been trying to get me to focus on. Even when I'm not getting a rep, just take a mental rep, see what the coverage is, see how it plays out, and all that type of stuff. With all those reps, Malik, how would you say you have progressed since day one in this facility up until now? Talking about like rookie minicamp day one? Sure. Oh, I don't like years ahead of where I was, but uh, that's just from helping from my coaches and just dedicating the time to just study this information. Did you think it would be like that much of a, pro a progression that quickly for you? As far as the I didn't, but they, they told me it would. They told me it would. He told me to set a, a, a alert on my calendar. He was like the first day of uh, training camp and just see where I would be from the time Ricky camp started. And he was right. I was light years ahead. Are you talking about light years? Where does that show up? Are you talking about as far as comfort level, footwork, technique? What, what, as far as just everything regarding my job description, operating the huddle, operating the line of scrimmage, just all the plays and being comfortable in them and saying them, just all of above. How about it? Just trying to still divine a role on this team and wherever I can help, help. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're asking uh, Braves and uh, both Tannehill are both saying some good things about you, just how you have progressed and everything. What have you done to kind of take strides to do that? Do yeah, definitely just locking in more. Uh, you know, it's completely different than last year. You know, I just have a year underneath my belt, uh, staying on top of the details, knowing what really the team keys are and how, you know, really us Titans should play. Sure. What type of chemistry do you think you've been building with Ryan out there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it just starts in the meeting room, him knowing that I know my assignments to the T, him knowing that, you know, when I go out there, I'm supposed to be at the right spot and on the right depth and, you know, make the play when the ball's in the air. So, you know, I'm still working on it, but, you know, everything's not going to be perfect. So, you know. <laughs>